Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In this video we are going to be going over a nice um, gem shader, this was requested. Um, we're going to go through a couple of different ways to do this. Mostly just because uh, these right here, shader wise, are going to be quite expensive. We'll go through that a little bit later on. I'll tell you why they're going to be expensive and how we can fix some of that. The models have been downloaded from free3d.com. I'm going to leave the link to these models in the description so you can follow along. Obviously, if you want to use your own models, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm using these just as my set standard for now. So, what I'm going to do is get rid of this guy. Goodbye. Boop. There we go. Now, they're going to appear broken. But that's fine. I don't need them to look a specific way for now. So. What do we need to do? We're going to right click, new material. We're going to call this gem underscore m. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly apply this to all of these guys. There we go. Now, while that's recompiling the shaders, we're going to head in here. And the first thing we're going to do before we touch anything is over on blend mode, change this to translucent, scroll down a little ways, and we're going to change this to surface translucency volume this is really only if you want to use uh, things like normals um, obviously if you're going to have some sort of scratches um, on the sub uh, on the surface or in the subsurface um, then you're going to need this enabled so that you can use the normals pin okay so what we're going to do hold one and left click for a constant we're going to plug this into both the base color and the metallic and we're going to set this to one Hold 1 and left click again. Leave this as 0 and plug this into roughness. So this is going to be completely smooth. Hold 1 and left click once more. Plug this into the opacity. We're going to set this to 0.5 to begin. Now what we need to do is we need to actually make our refraction. Right click. Get your Fresnel. Hold L on the keyboard and left click for a lerp. Now what we're going to do is plug the Fresnel into the alpha. Hold 1 and left click for a constant, plug this into the A, set this to 1, and get us another constant, plug this into the B, and we're going to set this to the documentation recommended 2.42 um, for diamonds and other such crystally things. We're then going to plug this into the refraction. What this is going to do is it's going to look at areas of angle change based on our Fresnel. And then it's going to lerp between basic refraction of, of nothing at all to quite a large amount of refraction. We've only got half opacity, so this is going to be half see-through. It's going to be really shiny. And its base color is just going to be white, so it's going to be as see-through as we can get. We're going to apply this. Now we're just going to wait for our computer to catch up. I am building a new PC. I'm, I'm ordering all the parts. It's one thing, good thing about having a job right now. Is that I can finally build a, a monster machine. Okay, now this is just going to compile our shaders. Now, this is going to be quite an expensive shader. Um, and at the moment, we're not even going as expensive as we can with it. So let's see. Come on, you devil. It's on its way. It's on its way. For now, we'll get ready for the next one. We'll right click add gem material and we'll duplicate this guy. And we'll just call this gem2 underscore m. And now we can buy them more shaders. Great. <laughs> there we are. So you can see now we've got this uh, this basic crystal. You can see the reflection, uh, the refraction is working really nice here. You can see this on the stairs and here on this little question mark that spins, and especially on the the type on the floor. Now you'll notice this is different from how it looked when I showed you at the beginning. That's because this isn't as expensive as we can go. As I say, you'll notice here the top is missing from this gem. The reason being just because the uh, the face is uh, it's got an inverted normal on this one, on this gem um, 
and you know it's free download I'm not gonna go ahead and fix that thing because I can't be bothered <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we'll open this back up and we're gonna tick two-sided and this is gonna allow it to render from both sides that will fix the hole in that gem so we'll get both sides of that um, render through and it will also render both sides of everywhere else on the gem so now when we're looking through it the first thing we're gonna see is the other side of the gem the reason this is going to get expensive for us is because of the Z buffer so the Z buffer or depth buffer buffer is basically the engine's way of drawing an object so you can see here we've got the gems and behind it we've got the stairs now what the depth buffer or, or Z buffer does is it looks at where all the verts are in the world takes the closest to us and doesn't draw the ones behind so right now even though we've got some of the stairs rendering the whole stair object isn't rendering okay it's decided you know we don't we don't need to draw this piece of that so it's not drawing it the problem with the translucent material is that we're still rendering it through the material itself so what it's doing is it's looking from the very far, the, the farest away that it can see drawing 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 and then it gets to hearing says, ah this is this is transparent so what it needs to do then is draw the transparency last the reason it's got to draw the transparency last is because the transparency is going to change what's behind it see there we're getting the changes and that's in both color refraction shadow lighting all sorts of things like that and you can see these are really really nice but if we were to click our little lighting mode our view mode from lit head to optimization view modes then go to shader complexity these things are going to be really gross so green is nice green is really nice uh, going into the brown you can see here down at the bottom where we've got this ps and vs going into the brown we're starting to get a little bit expensive the reason that's expensive on the floor is because this is a plane that's got um, opacity on it so that's not getting drawn but that's that's not too much of an issue here we have red because it's doing transparency and if we stack these together we start to get pink and white white is really bad you don't want white you can see here we've got PS right up the end here you don't want that okay having one of these on screen at a time so if these are gonna be like a hero object one is gonna be fine um, but if you start getting loads so they're like your main pickup it's gonna run really badly you don't want that let's change this back to lit so what can we do well we can lower the complexity by turning off two-sided but we don't really want to turn off two-sided because you're gonna lose a lot of its depth um, so for higher-end machines you don't need to really worry about that um, but one thing we can do is we can try and fake it a little bit so if we open up gem 2 which is the little copy that we've made we're going to take everything that we've plugged into refraction we're going to get rid of that we don't want it opacity we don't want that either now with nothing selected blend mode's going back to opaque and then what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of fake some surface reflection uh, to make it look refracted um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to search for world position and then we need ddx and ddy and then what we need from these is the cross product of both and I'm just gonna wait for this little ball to catch up and we're gonna plug this into the normal and watch what happens to our little preview you can see here now we get this cool mirror ball effect now the reason we're getting that is because it's gonna take each line uh, where there would be a, a normal so every single face has got sets of normals in in every vert and every line uh, in every side what this is doing is it's basically taking those and drawing them regardless of smoothing groups so it's taking anything that should be smooth and breaking it down now we can kind of fake that with smoothing groups but sometimes um, even with no smoothing groups faces that are completely flat completely parallel to each other are still gonna look like they're smooth and that's just because their normals are facing the right uh, the same way what this is going to do is regardless of the way they're facing it's going to break them up a little bit so if we were to take one of our gems and pop this on there you notice it's not transparent but we get this kind of cool effect still where we're getting this 
reflection that's kind of refracty. But if we were to head into our optimization visualization for shader complexity, you can see it's an it's an absolute well, it's pretty much awesome <laughs> as far as our runtime's going. So you see this this green here, that's pretty much the best kind of green. The sky's got pretty good. Um, but this gem now with the broken down normals is actually far less complex than the ones that have got the transparency on. Now, it's going to be a case of what your project needs. I like them looking transparent, but obviously the the complexity of going in there is going to cause some issues depending on how your game's uh, going to run, what it's going to look like, and you know everything else that's getting rendered on screen. So let's just mess around with these a little bit. Let's oh, no, we don't want to duplicate it. Let's delete that. Silly. What we're going to do is we're going to open this guy up. I'm just going to break off base color. Hold three and left click through three constant. Plug this in. Right click him. Convert to a parameter, and we'll call him color. Color, and then we're going to default this to white. There we go. Give him a little apply. He says, waiting for it to to catch up. I really can't wait to build my new machine. It's going to have like quadruple the amount of RAM this guy's got. Right out, there we go. We'll right click it, create a material instance. Open that up. Under color. We're now going to give this a color. I'm just going to make it red. Give him a quick save. We'll throw him onto the end gem. Let that compile. And you'll be able to see how this is going to work with a different color. Now obviously when you build the lighting on these things you're going to get a slightly different look as well. Um, they're actually quite cool with the lighting built. I believe that these guys have already got some built-in shadows because I did them earlier on. There we go, you can see how we've got the red here, which is actually a really nice colour as well. Some colours aren't going to look so fantastic, um, obviously, because this is the refraction index for diamond, which is uh, it has less imperfections than things like ruby, sapphires, and emeralds. Um, so reds, some colours aren't, aren't going to look quite as nice as just the pure white. They're still pretty nifty. Right, so I hope some of you guys are going to find that useful. It's quite a nice little shader. Um, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.